Welcome to Computer Science 320, 2015 Winter 1's Midterm 1 Practice Problems. We're working on Part 2 of Problem 1, and I've just repeated from the intro of the problem some useful text. I've done that on a few problems. I won't go into it anymore on subsequent problems. So let's start by just reading the question. Would a good omega bound on the runtime of this algorithm in terms of n be best described as a best case bound, a worst case bound, or neither? And we're supposed to choose one and briefly justify our answer. So an omega bound in general is a lower bound. It could be a lower bound on the best case performance of an algorithm. It could be a lower bound on the worst case performance. It could be a lower bound on something else. Average case performance, amortized performance, expected performance, lots of other things. So this is a little bit of a strange question on the face of it, because generally speaking, an omega bound can be on the best case, it can be on the worst case. So this is probably trying to get at some, some sort of misconception people might have about omega bounds. People often think omega bounds only apply to the best case. And indeed, typically, for most algorithms, the best case is faster than the worst case, or, or at least for some algorithms. And so we can think about the best case being a lower bound on the worst case. It really is. Your best case performance has to be a lower bound on your worst case performance. But that doesn't mean that you're only interested in omega bounds on either one. You might want to lower bound your best case performance. You might want to lower bound your worst case performance. In this particular case, if we're thinking about the algorithm in terms of n, which you'll recall is the length of the array from the previous part, well, if that length is not divisible by 4, then we're going to end up with constant runtime. That's what the recurrence relation we figured out last time said. If that length is divisible by 4, then the runtime is going to be dependent on the runtime on arrays that are 1 fourth as large. And you'll notice that nothing in the runtime is dependent on the contents of the array A. So in fact, for a particular value of n, so if you say, oh, I'm interested in an array of length 1,005, there's actually only one runtime for this algorithm. There isn't a better case and a worst case for an array of length 1,005. Now, we define a best case to be not a particular instance of the problem, but kind of a scalable instance. So given a size of the input, we should be able to give an instance of that size that produces this best case behavior. Given a different size of the input, we should be able to produce a new instance of that size that produces the best case behavior. And if you think about an algorithm like linear search, where we get an array and a target that we're searching for, and let's just say we're searching for one all the time, then there can be best cases and worst cases for a particular size. If your array is 100 elements long, well, what's the fastest you can get the algorithm to run if you're searching for the element one in the array? If you put one at the start of the array, it's going to find it right away and it'll stop right away. If you put one at the end of the array, or you don't include one at all in the array, then the algorithm is going to take as long as it can take. And both of those descriptions don't really depend on the array being 100 elements long. They are scalable problem inputs. So the best case for linear search is an array of whatever length you want, where the target we're looking for is at the start of the array. And the worst case is an array of whatever length you want, where the target we're looking for is not in the array. They're scalable. Whatever problem size you give me, I can give you a best case instance. Whatever problem size you give me, I can give you a worst case instance. But in this particular case, for this algorithm right here, once you give me a problem size, my hands are kind of tied. It doesn't matter what I put in the array, the algorithm is going to take a certain amount of time to run. The best case and the worst case are all the same. So really the answer I'd like to give to this question is both. A good omega bound on the runtime of this algorithm in terms of n is going to be an omega bound on the best case, and it's going to be an omega bound on the worst case. But I'm not being given that choice. So if I had to choose one, I would probably choose neither because best case isn't right, worst case isn't right. It's not either of those. It's really just an omega bound on the runtime regardless of the type, the shape of input that we receive.
So I'm going to say neither. That's my choice. And what should my justification be? Well, once we pick a problem size, the runtime is fixed. So no, you know, I was going to say no best case and no worst case, but let's say no distinct best or worst case exists. Okay, that completes our problem. Next, we'll move on to the next part.